It's been over a year now since I released my review of my motherboard, the X570 Aurus Elite. And man, did you guys like that video. In fact, it's the most viewed video on my channel by far. So I guess thanks for that. I guess it helped with my ego temporarily. And in that review, I recommended the motherboard, saying it's really a great starter X570 motherboard with a few tiny annoyances. But now that I've been using it for almost a year, does it still hold up? Do I have any regrets about choosing it? Have there been any issues that develop over time? And what would I recommend now? Those are all fantastic questions I just came up with and I'll be answering in the next few minutes just for all of you watching. So you better be grateful. So do I still like the motherboard? Oh totally yeah. I'm still completely glad I went X570 and this motherboard is pretty much as starter X570 as you can get without going with into the territory of your extremely cheap, unreliable uh, motherboards that can even badly influence the performance of your CPU. So I'd still say if you need an X570 entrance level motherboard, that, then I'd probably still recommend going with the Aorus Elite. Now the question of what I even still recommend going X570 in the first place is something I'll be addressing a bit later, but if you do, then go with this board. And another thing I've really grown to appreciate that I haven't mentioned in my original review is to do with the chipset fan. Basically all X570 motherboards need a chipset fan because of the increased wattage going to it thanks to PCIe Gen 4. So they need that extra cooling. But frankly one thing I noticed with this motherboard is that the fan stops when it is not required. Many other X570 motherboards have the fan spinning the whole time. Not only making it l slightly louder, like it's not gonna be too loud because it's just a tiny fan, but still it's gonna make it a bit louder and also it could wear down the fan faster. And having your chipset fan break is something you definitely don't want. So having it only be used when it's needed is a definitely a great touch which I appreciate in this motherboard. However, one thing it does worse than even B450 boards is in terms of connectivity. For the most part, connectivity is absolutely fine, apart from one major exception, and that is a lack of USB Type-C. Now, USB Type-C is just something that re is really nice to have, and there's plenty of high-speed USB already on the motherboard. However, it does really throw into question exactly how future-proof this motherboard is. I know that some people hate when other people refer to anything as future-proof in the tech world, but Whatever, I don't care. It does make it slightly less future-proof, because in a few years or even months time when you could really use some Type-C USB, well, it's not going to be present there. However, one nice thing is that there is a USB Type-C connector on the motherboard itself, so if you have a USB Type-C in your case, well, you can go with that. However, many cases, especially budget cases, still don't have Type-C. And if you're already buying a budget X570 motherboard like this, you're probably also going for more budget case as well. For example, in my case, my case, haha, <laughs> is a Corsair 110R, which has no Type-C connector, which means that I'm completely left without any USB Type-C. So that's definitely kind of annoying. However, apart from that, there isn't really much else I can critique about it. I mean, it does its job. The PCI Express layout is great. You have plenty of space for everything, even if you have uh, several expansion cards. Like for example, I have a graphics card and a sound card. It all fits in there nice and I think has enough space to breathe. It has plenty of internal connectors for everything from SATA to RGB headers to whatever else you want. The on-mod audio is fine but definitely not great when compared to using something like a sound card and the VRMs are actually really really decent for a entry-level motherboard of any sorts. So that's all good and great and I would definitely still recommend this motherboard but that leads us to the main question of would I even buy X570 now? The only real benefit for most people compared to a high-end X470 or B450 board is PCIe Gen 4. So unless you need that or going with a really high-end Ryzen chip like the 13900X or the 13950X, then X570 may still not be for you. However, if you do want any of its features, then this is as entry level as you can really get. Thankfully, it does have some more higher end features like the fan stopping when it's not needed. And speaking of which, the Smart Fan 5 interface, which it comes with to control your fan speeds, is also really good. If a bit weird at times, like for example, if you simply just plug in a USB stick or something, all the fans may ramp up for a second, so that can get something a bit annoying. If you just want a straightforward X570 experience, then I'd still go with this. But then there is a very, very, very big threat to their recommendation in the future over there. Can you see it? It says B550 because that is gonna change a lot about this recommendation because B550 
is going to come with PC Gen 4 and it, you can also expect it to have many of the features that have ever since the release of X570 really increased in demand like USB Type-C. So even though I still don't expect low tier B550 board to support Type-C, by mid tier you probably start seeing one if not two USB Type-C's on the back. And it's gonna be also way cheaper than X570 but we don't really know much else about it. But for now I'll just say don't buy an X570 motherboard unless you're going with something high end. Wait for B550 and then if there's a B550 board that really has everything you need, go with that. Right now, lower end X570 is in a very weird position and I can't really say you're not going to regret it down the line. I definitely don't regret it because while I bought this the second that Ryzen 3000 came out, there were no other alternatives. So I have to wait more than a year for B550 to come around and maybe even then B550 won't offer all the things I need. But for now, I'll be wary and say don't buy it until B550 comes out. Then make a decision and I'll probably make another video then seeing how my recommendation changes. It's like, is there anything I missed? I feel like this video is a bit too short. It, I mean, it's nice, a black PCB, um, uh, it's, it, it works, like it, 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 like I plugged, like I plugged everything in and it works, it's, well, like how would they make a video talking about a motherboard that has almost 18,000 views? Making reviews for these things is really difficult, like what do you talk about? It's a motherboard! You know what, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna leave it at that. If you want a more in-depth analysis, I guess, go check out my original review, which will be up in the iCards above. Plus, if you want to know more about things like PCIe Gen 4, I also have uh, several videos on PCIe Gen 4, which I also link in the iCards if you want to see if that's really something you benefit from. And if you have enough money to spare to afford to get yourself an X570 or a B550 motherboard, then you also may have enough money to give me on Patreon, because it's linked down in the description below, and even one dollar moment goes a long way in helping me make way better content, and also content on way more interesting topics. It really does mean a lot, it really does help, and I definitely appreciate everyone who donates on there, it really does go a long way. Also down there in the description below, you'll find my Discord if you want to talk to me about this video or whatever else. If you have recommendations for videos, if you want to know, know more about X570, B550, whatever, talk to me or others down there. And I guess that's really it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.